arguably one of the greatest video game series from the last generation, but undoubtedly the greatest Batman video game series of all time has got to be the Arkham series. We all should have played them, and you probably think that you know everything about them, but here are 11 facts about the Arkham series that you probably didn't know. One of them that I'm throwing in is a fake, which I'll reveal at the end of the video, so don't go away, stick around for that. Click on the cards in the top right hand corner of this video, and in order to continue this video, you gotta slam that like button. I'm serious. You gotta, you gotta press it. Press it. <laughs> ah, never mind. The first two games, both created by Rocksteady, Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, were both written by Paul Dini, which explains why their narrative is so good and why the series stands out as one of the strongest examples of great storytelling in games, at least for me. He's worked on Superman the Animated Series, the new Superman and Batman Adventures and Batman Beyond, and has written a few comic books for DC including Superman, Peace on Earth, and co-created everyone's favorite clown, Harley Quinn. Yeah. So I guess he understands a couple of things about the DC Universe. There are more games than you can remember in the series than Arkham Asylum, City and Origins and of course the upcoming night. Outside of these big AAA titles there was Arkham City Lockdown for Android and iOS, the 2.5D Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate on 3DS, 360 and PlayStation 3, Arkham Origins the mobile game and Batman Arkham Underworld. The Arkham City Armored Edition was the Wii U release of Arkham City so don't get that confused. Mark Hamill, who many of you know as the famous voice behind the Joker from the animated series uh, as well as the Arkham games, announced that Batman Arkham City would be his last appearance as the Joker. He's probably more famous though for playing Luke Skywalker in the original Star Wars films. Batman, I am your father. No, I'm kidding. Your father's dead. And so's your mom. Arkham Asylum received a Guinness World Record for the most critically acclaimed superhero game ever when it got a Metacritic score of 91.67. Arkham City dethroned it in 2014 with its game ranking score of 96.12%. It's currently still leading the pack. I have a feeling that Arkham Knight will take it down. You may not know this, but a wide variety of comic books were released about the Arkham Universe. They flesh out the stories of the games and act as prequels in most cases to the plots of the Arkham series. They're worth reading to get a better idea of what's happening in the world of Arkham and just showcase how robust the stories in the Arkham series actually are. A board game was released after Arkham City called Arkham City Escape. It's a two-player board game that incorporates a lot of different board game mechanics. It's not as widely acclaimed as the video game, but it looks like a lot of fun. Because the initial game was basically converted from the Christopher Nolan films, Christian Bale was approached to voice Batman. He turned it down because of, and I quote, Video games are for kids. I mean, what grown up plays Mario, what doggy doo doo? <laughs> End quote. In the Arkham Penitentiary in Arkham Asylum, there's a cell with an inmate named Luke Oliver. His name is also mentioned on the Joker's party list. His inclusion is strange because the character is extremely well detailed compared to the other inmates and there's a good reason for it. Luke won a competition in 2008 to have his face rendered somewhere in the game. It just happened to be in a prison cell. In an attempt to make the life of pirates extremely hard and frustrating, Rocksteady removed the ability to glide in the pirated version of Arkham Asylum. This resulted in some pretty awesome comments on the forums when someone reported the issue. And I'm quoting here. <clears throat> the problem you have encountered is a hook in the copy protection to catch up people who try and download cracked versions of the game for free. It's not a bug in the game's code, it's a bug in your moral code. <laughs> Brilliant. Just to show you the meticulous amount of detail that goes into the Arkham series, one person worked on the cape animation in Arkham Asylum for two years. One person. According to Ian Livingston, president of Eidos at the time, there are 700 animations and sound clips just for the cape alone. That's some serious dedication. The sound effect for Batman's explosive gel is in fact whipped cream. No wonder I got hungry every time I try to blow up a wall. Thanks for watching friends! Of course I told you at the beginning of the video that one of these facts was a fraud. If you didn't pick it up, it was number 7. There is some history of the Arkham series coming into existence because of a failed Christopher Nolan game, but the real obvious falsity was that Christian Bale had no involvement with the games whatsoever. And I'm not sure he's publicly stated anything about his opinion of video games. Although I'd totally beat him at Mortal Kombat or something. Again, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, smash that thumbs yuppie button underneath the video and let me know what you think of the Batman Arkham series in the comments below. Oh, and subscribe. In the meantime, don't do drugs, stay in school, and high five a stranger. Adios.